Are Russia and China joining forces to dominate the Arctic? This question has emerged as a pivotal concern in global geopolitics. The Arctic, once considered a remote and desolate region, is now seeing an increased presence of these two world powers. The implications of this are far-reaching and have sparked growing concern in the Pentagon. Russia and China, countries with significant global influence, are ramping up their activities in the Arctic. Their focus is not solely on natural resource exploration or climate research, but extends to strategic infrastructure development and military exercises. Let's delve a bit further into this. Russia's partnership with China is becoming increasingly evident as they collaborate on developing infrastructure along the Northern Sea Route, a shipping lane that runs from the Atlantic to the Pacific through the Arctic Ocean. This route, made more accessible due to melting ice caps, offers a faster alternative to the traditional shipping lanes via the Suez or Panama canals. But it's not just about trade routes. Russia and China are also conducting joint military exercises in the Arctic. These exercises, viewed as a show of force, are a clear indication of their shared economic and strategic interests in the region. The Arctic, with its vast, untapped natural resources and strategic position, is becoming a hotbed of international competition. The increased military and commercial activities by Russia and China are reshaping the geopolitics of the region prompting other nations to reassess their Arctic policies. The Arctic is no longer a deserted wasteland, but a contested arena of global powerhouses. This power play in the icy north is a game changer, and the world is watching closely as the situation unfolds. How is the United States reacting to this geopolitical shift in the Arctic? The US has been quick to respond, resetting its Arctic policy and significantly ramping up its military training this isn't a knee-jerk reaction, but a strategic move designed to counter the Russo-Chinese partnership. The US is well aware of the potential implications of the increased presence of Russia and China in the Arctic and is actively working to ensure its own interests are protected. The Biden administration has been particularly proactive in this regard, with a clear focus on the Arctic region. The importance of the Arctic in the grand scheme of geopolitics is not lost on the administration, and their actions reflect this understanding. They've created senior positions specifically to oversee Arctic policy, a clear indication of the seriousness with which they're taking the situation. These senior officials have a monumental task ahead of them. They're tasked with navigating the complex and ever-evolving geopolitical landscape of the Arctic while ensuring that the US's interests are safeguarded. They will need to formulate strategies that can counter the economic and military advances of Russia and China, while also addressing the challenges posed by climate change. The US is also making significant infrastructure investments in Alaska. These are not just to bolster its military presence, but also to address the impacts of climate warming. The Arctic is warming at twice the rate of the rest of the world, and this is creating a host of challenges that the US must be prepared to confront. In essence, the US is gearing up for what could be a long and complex battle over control of the Arctic. It's not just about countering the influence of Russia and China, but also about addressing the broader implications of climate change and ensuring that the Arctic remains a region of peace and cooperation. The US is clearly not sitting idle, but is it enough to counter the Russo-Chinese influence in the region? What does this power play mean for Alaska? As the Arctic region becomes a hotbed of geopolitical maneuvering, it's Alaska that finds itself in the crosshairs. This northernmost US state, with its strategic location in the Arctic, is set to play a pivotal role in the unfolding drama. In response to the increased presence of Russia and China and the escalating climate change impacts, the US government is turning its focus towards Alaska. Infrastructure investments are being made not just for defense, but also to address climate warming impacts. Let's delve a bit deeper into what this means for Alaska. In an era where climate change is reshaping the globe, Alaska is experiencing it firsthand. The state is warming twice as fast as the rest of the country, causing permafrost to thaw, sea ice to melt and coastlines to erode. Such drastic changes pose significant challenges to the infrastructure and the people of Alaska. But every cloud has a silver lining. 
The same climate changes are also opening up new economic opportunities for Alaska. As the ice melts, new sea routes are becoming navigable, potentially turning the state into a bustling hub of activity. This has led to increased infrastructure investments in the region aimed at capitalizing on these emerging opportunities while also addressing the environmental challenges. However, these investments are not just about economics. Alaska's strategic location makes it an ideal outpost for monitoring and responding to any potential threats in the Arctic. Therefore, a part of these investments is also going towards bolstering Alaska's defenses and its ability to respond to any potential conflicts. In essence, Alaska is transforming. Once seen as the last frontier, it's now becoming a crucial player in the Arctic power play. Its strategic location, coupled with the changing climate, is reshaping its destiny, bringing with it both challenges and opportunities. Alaska, once the last frontier, is now at the heart of a geopolitical tug of war. Does this increased activity in the Arctic bring us closer to conflict? A question that's been echoing in the halls of policy and defense. The Arctic, once a serene landscape of ice and snow, is now a chessboard where superpowers are positioning their pieces. The intensified military and commercial activities in the region aren't just about control, they're about survival about securing resources and trade routes for the future. But with this heightened activity comes the risk of conflicts, the danger of a spark igniting a fire that could engulf nations. A robust defense strategy is not an option, it's a necessity. But it's not just about deploying more troops or building more bases. It's about understanding, about considering the complex matrix of climate change and geopolitics that influences every move on this icy chessboard. Climate change is transforming the Arctic, melting the ice caps, opening up new sea routes, changing the game. This environmental shift is influencing geopolitics, creating opportunities for nations to expand their influence, but also creating potential points of contention. Meanwhile, geopolitics is a dance of power and control, a ballet of alliances and rivalries that can turn a peaceful region into a battlefield. The Arctic is no exception. The increased presence of Russia and China, the repositioning of the US, all these moves are reshaping the geopolitical landscape of the Arctic, increasing the risk of conflict. But the key to mitigating this risk lies in understanding and considering both climate change and geopolitics when formulating a defense strategy. It's about recognizing the environmental shifts, understanding the political dynamics, and making strategic decisions that prioritize peace and cooperation. The Arctic, once a realm of peace and cooperation, is now a potential flashpoint. But it doesn't have to be. With a comprehensive defense strategy that considers climate change and geopolitics, we can navigate these icy waters and ensure that the Arctic remains a region of peace and cooperation, not a battlefield. But what about the elephant in the room, climate change? Indeed, we cannot discuss the Arctic without acknowledging the profound role of climate change in this geopolitical shift. The Arctic, once a frozen frontier, is warming twice as fast as the rest of the world. As the ice caps melt, they are revealing not only new sea routes, but also untapped resources. This dramatic transformation is fueling competition among nations. The melting ice is opening up the Northern Sea Route, a shortcut between Asia and Europe that cuts travel time by almost half compared to the traditional Suez Canal route. This is particularly significant for countries like Russia and China, who are keen to exploit this new trade route for their economic interests. But it's not just about trade. Beneath the Arctic's icy surface lie vast reserves of oil, gas and minerals. As the ice recedes, these resources become increasingly accessible, further intensifying the scramble for control in the region. However, this rush for the Arctic's resources is not without consequences. The very act of extracting these resources could accelerate the warming of the region, thereby exacerbating the problem we're trying to solve. It's a paradox, isn't it? The desire for economic gain could ultimately lead to the demise of the very prize nations are vying for. Furthermore, the increased human activity in the Arctic poses threats to the region's unique and fragile ecosystems. The habitat of polar bears, seals and a myriad of other species are under threat. These ecological changes could have far-reaching implications, disrupting not just local but global biodiversity. So, where does this leave us? 
The melting Arctic is a stark reminder of the urgency of climate change. It's a wake-up call for the world to move beyond short-term economic interests and focus on long-term sustainability. Climate change, it seems, is not just an environmental issue, but a geopolitical game-changer. What does the future hold for the Arctic? Let's pause for a moment and ponder on this question. As the Earth's thermostat, the Arctic is a barometer for the health of our planet. It's a fragile ecosystem, a vast icy wilderness that is currently in the throes of a power play between major powers. The unforgiving Arctic landscape is becoming the stage for a new kind of Cold War. Russia and China, two of the world's most powerful nations, are increasing their presence in the region. They're investing in infrastructure, conducting military exercises, and forging alliances, all in a bid to gain control over the Arctic's vast resources and strategic shipping routes. Meanwhile, the United States is not standing idle. It's resetting its Arctic policy, ramping up military training and investing in Alaska's infrastructure to mitigate the effects of climate change. The stakes are high and the potential for conflict is real. But let's not lose sight of the bigger picture. The Arctic is more than just a geopolitical chessboard. It's a unique ecosystem that plays a crucial role in regulating the world's climate. It's home to a diverse array of wildlife and indigenous communities whose livelihoods are intimately tied to the land and sea. The future of the Arctic is, therefore, not just a question of who controls it. It's about how we manage this fragile ecosystem in a sustainable way. It's about international cooperation, about balancing economic interests with environmental responsibility. It's about acknowledging the rights of indigenous communities and preserving their way of life. And let's quickly recap the key points we've discussed. We've traversed the vast icy landscapes of the Arctic, a region that's rapidly transformed from the world's last frontier to a stage for a new power play. The increasing influence of Russia and China in the Arctic has been a key focus. Their partnership to develop infrastructure along the Northern Sea Route and their joint military exercises are clear signs of shared economic interests. In response, the United States is redefining its Arctic policy. The Biden administration is prioritizing the region, creating senior positions to oversee Arctic policy and investing in Alaskan infrastructure to counteract the impacts of climate change. Speaking of Alaska, this northernmost state is in the direct line of fire. It's facing the brunt of climate change and the geopolitical tensions, with its future hanging in the balance. We also explored the escalating risk of conflict in the Arctic. As military and commercial activities increase, so does the possibility of clashes. This has prompted the need for a robust defense strategy that takes into account both climate change and geopolitics. Climate change, of course, is the elephant in the room. It's not just causing the ice to melt, but also reshaping the geopolitical landscape. The melting ice is opening up new shipping routes and access to untapped resources, adding another layer of complexity to the situation. Finally, we looked into the uncertain future of the Arctic. With so many variables at play, it's anyone's guess how the Arctic chessboard will look in the coming years. The Arctic, once a frozen wasteland, has become a hotbed of geopolitical intrigue. As the ice melts, the world watches with bated breath. 